Titanic would be the word I would be looking for. It's a state of the shack. How's that sound? So, I'm sitting here rebuilding this very unhappy winch that I bought. Came with the, actually I showed you the, the Polaris 500. This is one, the winch that came with it. As you can see, it's very unhappy. But, I think it's rebuildable. I think I should be able to get it where this thing works again. Because this part's fine. I can shove a extension in there and it spin it and everything works. It's this bit that was seized up and I got it unseized. Now I'm going to work on cleaning all the rust out of it and getting this one brush to do its thing again because all the rest of these brushes are doing what they're supposed to. It's just this one that doesn't want to do nothing. I do that, clean everything up, it ought to work. I mean it's a worn winch, it should be fine. So what is new with the shack? Golf carts are still here, motorcycles still here, junk in the back, you know. About the same. Uh, let's see. What's been going on with the channel? So, I have... I was selling a Lancer for somebody. Y'all probably saw that video. A little Mitsubishi Lancer. It ran good. It just made a weird noise in the engine. Still don't know what it was. Some guy bought it. Using it as a get-to car because his truck's transmission blew up. So, I hope it lasts for him. Who knows? A car may have another, you know, 100,000 miles in it or something. It's just making a weird noise or needs a valve adjustment or something. I don't know. Um, my boat is for sale. Now that, that has a story in itself. So, I have my boat for sale, yes. Because at the end of the year, I'm losing my parking spot where I keep it. And I have an agreement with the neighbor... To where if I cut their grass, I get to keep my boat in the backyard. Pretty pretty fair. All of the nearby or any somewhat reputable place to store a boat, you're $150 a month and up. And for the cheaper ones, you come to go get your boat and you might be missing a wheel or your batteries or the whole motor missing. So I'm not paying $150 a month to keep my boat. I don't use it enough and it's got issues like the whole interior needs to be redone which you know isn't that bad and then you know it's great for the little bit of fishing I do but you know I just I don't have the time to go fishing I'm at work six seven days a week almost all the time now I hardly have time for anything else so yeah I am trying my most diligent effort to get into a class to where I can get my endorsement and get this motorcycle endorsement done. But, you know, it's Louisiana. It proves very difficult to do anything government related. Airplane. Um, let's see, what else we got going on? Alright. Let me tell you a story of fame, fortune, and a dirty rat. So, I have my boat up for sale. I had this guy super interested, you know, he wants to come check it out. He offers to trade me his four-wheeler he has. I'm like, oh, you know, I, I might be interested. So we text back and forth. I find out that it's a 2008 or 2007, whatever it is, Polaris 800 V-twin or twin-cylinder, four-wheel drive, big giant tires on it. You know, this thing's fantastic looking. I'm like, man, that thing sounds pretty nice. Oh, yeah, 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 everything's perfect on it. Nothing's broke, you know, it does everything. It's got a radio. I'm like, okay, well, I'm willing to check it out. So he brings it over. He comes, checks the boat out. You know, you've seen the video, or you maybe you saw the video of the boat. It runs, you know, the interior's bad, but everything else is, you know, flawless. So I'm just like, you want to go out for a ride right now? Let's go, you know, come check the boat out. We'll go run. No, no, I don't need to do that. I was like, literally, the lake is down the street. You sure you don't want to see it run? You know, go out on the lake real quick. No, no, it's fine. So, okay. So, he'd seen the video you'd seen, too. So, it ran on the hose. It sprays water a little bit. So, we do the trade. I bring the four-wheeler here. You know, check it out a little bit. But, you know, put it in shed. It's in the evening. I don't feel like metal and whatnot. And next day, he calls. He's having a fit because it's not spraying water when he has it hooked up on the hose. 
So dude, it's mercury, it's got thermostats, it doesn't spray water when it's on the hose. So you're lucky if they do, it's because the engine's getting hot. So uh, I'll take your word for it, but you know, I don't think this is right. So I proceed to send them about 20 or 30 links to various forums and dealer networks and all of that talking about how the mercury only opens the thermostats usually when it's submerged in water and at operating temperature aka in the water like I wanted to do so I sent him all that he said okay okay so then he calls uh, one of the local boat places around here they tell him the same thing so you know maybe he's convinced now I don't know so that's day two I'm supposed to meet up this happened on a Monday I think or a Friday so over the weekend you know we're gonna meet next week when the notary offices open back up Monday is when he called me about, you know, having the, the water not coming out. So, we're supposed to meet Wednesday to do the paperwork. Oh, I, I can't get over that way right now. You know, you're, you're going to have to, you know, we'll just have to meet later in the week. Okay, you know, I can wait a little bit longer. In the meantime, I have the four-wheeler here, so I go through it, you know, just check things out. So I start going over it, and I start noticing things that are broke, and he said work just fine. So fuel light was on gas gauge blinking on it I put three gallons of gas in it and it's supposed to hold like seven gas gauge didn't move totally full to the top still says empty so okay gas gauge is broke you know I, I can live with that you know it's a four-wheeler the gas caps right there in front of you you glance every now and then look in the tank okay I'm getting close you know I need to go top it up that's not a big deal well, I start noticing every time I go to move it forward or backward, it clunks. So, you know, I go to jack up the wheels, move things around, figure out what's going on. I find the left side rear wheel bearings bad. You can move the wheel all around. And the right side A-arm bushings are gone. Like, it's just the bolt sitting in the hole. Just wallowed out. I look at it from the back, from one side to the other. He has a front tire on the back on one side, and the other side set just, you know, the right way. These big mud tires, so like the front ones are a little more rounded, and the back ones have a little more sidewall that sticks out. It's very subtle, but when you look at it one to the other, it's noticeable. So I take the wheels off, swap them around. Brakes are almost totally wore out. They're almost down to the metal. So it's okay. And I notice because this thing's lifted in such big tires, three out of four CV boots have rips in them, and the grease is coming out. I pointed that out when he first dropped it off. Oh, no, no, they just leak a little bit. Well, on closer inspection, spinning the wheels around, I see the gaps opening up in the CV boot. So, another problem. Steering stem bushing was bad. You could have flopped that thing all around. Both inner and outer tie rod ends were wore out. So, I've got a laundry list piling up on this thing. So, I'm like, man, this thing, you know, it needs a lot of work and axles for this thing are not cheap you know 150 bucks a piece that adds up fast you know a little bit of money into it isn't that bad you know be, you know be worth it just like my boat needs a little bit of money pull the carpet up rhino line the inside or just go and buy you some seats and it'd be fine well Wednesday comes and goes Thursday comes and goes alright we're gonna meet on Friday now take this on the f previous Friday, I took off a half day so I could meet this dude and sell him the boat. I take off a half day on this Friday so I can go down. Now, if you know anything about the geology or geography of New Orleans, I live to the west of New Orleans in the Kenner area. This guy lives south, very far south, about an hour south of New Orleans. So I drive down there with his trailer that he left behind. Because, you know, I'm going to be nice. I'm going to bring it back to him so he doesn't have to make another trip up this far. We go to his notary place that he claims had a lower price. He said, oh, it's only going to cost me like a hundred and something to get the titles changed. Oh, that sounds awesome. I was like, because when I got my titles changed, it was like almost 300 bucks. No, 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 these people are good. Okay. So... I meet him down there. Now, I'll take another half day off of work to go down there. We go in this title place, you know, he's all excited, you know, I'm just ready to get this over with because I'm tired of, you know, dealing with phone calls and question this, question that. 
I got bill of sale, paperwork all in hand, uh, titles, all of that. Go to sit down, pull out the cards and all of that, handle the paper over to the lady, starts typing. She's like, yeah, it's going to be about 300 and something dollars. 300 and something dollars? What are, you, what are you talking about? I called y'all a little while ago. So he stands up, starts making a fuss. Who did I call? Who was I talking to earlier? He got a quote for just the boat, not the trailer. Trailer isn't in Louisiana. You have to have a title on the trailer. You have to have a title on the boat. They charge you specifically for each. Same taxes and titles. You have to pay tax and title on the boat. You have to pay tax and title per foot, if I remember right. Or they may have gotten rid of that rule again. I don't remember. If it's under a certain year, I don't remember. Um, you have to pay all of the stupid fees twice because it's Louisiana. So, you know, he's having a fit. Oh, man, I, I ain't got the money for $300. This just ain't worth it. This this boat ain't worth it. I'm just like, he's like, you, you're going to have to put money on this. I was like, I'm not putting money on this. I was like, you're the one that bought it. You called ahead. He was like, well, this, this trade's not looking this trade's not looking fair. You're going to have to put money on this or, or we're going to have to trade back. I was like, look, we're going to trade back. I said, because you said everything was flawless on this four-wheeler and there's like 10 things wrong with it. And I start naming him. He's just sitting there, like, not even looking at me, looking at the ground. It's like, mm hmm, I found out. You told me everything was fine, and I'm finding all these things that are broke. So he starts going off on the people about how they're charging way too much money and how they, they took him for a ride and all of this. I'm sitting there, like, bro, I took off of work two days early to come deal with your foolishness, and I had to deal with you constantly aggravating me about question this, question that. So it's like, you know what, look, we're going to trade back, let's go, get it over with. Go to pick up my boat, it's in the dude's backyard, you know. I'm not talking to him because I'm pretty pissed off right now. Because, you know, he wastes a whole week of my time, basically. I had other offers available, cash offers, waiting to buy this boat from me. And I got this dude wasting my time. So he pulls the boat out the yard. Numbers appealed off on one side, the letters appealed off the back, my registration stickers peeled off the side, and he started peeling the carpet up. So I'm like, come on, dude, really? And so we, st we st I hook it up, start loading everything up. I'm missing like two life jackets. You know what? I don't even care right now. We go to pick up the four-wheeler. I don't even say a word to him. Give him his four-wheeler. He rolls out. So... That is a fine example of you need to really research the person that you're trying to sell something to and do it in writing first time you meet. Just trying to be nice and give the dude a little time, you know, all of this, that, and the other. He had an excuse. I needed to be there early on that Friday because he had to go pick his kid up. Well, when we went to go trade back, I never heard nothing about him having to go pick his kid up. Wasted a whole two hours driving there and back, back up here to Kenner and back down to where he lives so that's the wonderful rant slash story of the shack this week or this month whatever so let's see what else can I do on a lighter note um the green uh, players that I'm rebuilding this for which hopefully I rebuild this it'll work flawless I have got it almost completely ready. I'm going to do an update video pretty soon, maybe this weekend. I got the electrical system figured out. This is the only part I need for the electrical system. It's a solenoid, which from now I've just been jumping across with the old uh, pair of pliers. Actually, these pliers specifically. You see there's a little bit of burn to the top of them. Not too bad. Um, I had it running very briefly the other day, and this is the fuel shutoff slash reserve slash, you know, whatever. Started leaking out the front here. I think the O-ring went bad. I just ordered one. It was cheap on eBay. So I got this guy. I got this guy. That should be enough to get it to start and run. I ordered a brand new belt because the two that I have, one was burned up like it had sat there and smoked, and the other one's for a golf cart. It's like almost the same size, but a little bit bigger. So I just ordered the belt that's supposed to be on there. It was like 10 bucks. Reputable source. So. And then I think the only things I need after that 
if it runs is I need a single hose for a coolant line I can fill that up check the cooling system make sure it doesn't overheat or have a head gasket leak or something gonna need a battery which that'll be the last thing I buy because I'm not spending a hundred bucks on a battery and something else be busted or you know head gasket or something like that and then whether or not I want to build or buy racks because it didn't come with any oh in an air filter but I have it on the way already um, so basically I'd say within the end of the month it should be ready to ride or at least putter around and it's it's I would say it's pretty nice it's a 2000 so it's got some age on it looking at like the diffs and you know into the crankcase that a little bit I could see it looked like it didn't have too many hours on it so it, doesn't, it didn't seem too bad so it's a 500 it ought to be pretty fun I've got two people interested in buying it already and I don't even have it built yet so I'm really hoping it's in good shape. Ah, one more thing I need. The front master cylinder, which the two people that are willing to buy it don't care. The rear master cylinder works. It'll skid the back wheels, but the one for the front that's on the handlebar controls all the brakes. It needs at least the master cylinder, and it needs the little metal piece. There's like a T-valve, so it comes down from the master cylinder. It goes four ways. It has rusted out at the top and rusted out at the bottom, so probably all four of them need to be changed. But it splits to two front wheels and then the one that goes to the back. Which, you know, if I want to spend the money and I want to get the parts, I probably could do it. But, you know, it's not super important. Um, something else real quick, you know. Um, let's see. Bike's, you know, still doing fine. And I guess that's about it. I'm going to be bringing the Rhino back here pretty soon. Go to work and you know it. It's getting late. I'm waiting for everyone to finish up here. But I know the Rhino needs brakes. It now needs a starter because that has decided to go out. I know it's the starter because I took it all apart to check it. And if you beat on the starter with something.